right, well, let's continue on and try to work out our problem 12 and 13. They are a continuation with a, uh, another shear and bending moment diagram arrangement. And so, uh, as before, I would, I would start by looking at how you would expect this beam to bend and to kind of sketch that on the diagram to kind of help uh, jump start towards the, the answer. Start here, this little cantilever end, I would expect that to bend down. All right, this part I would expect to kind of have some, some positive curvature, it would kind of bend, bend down in a way like this. But here we've got something kind of interesting where a part of this is a cantilever and then this is a backspan. So I really kind of expect to get something that's a little bit of a uh, mixture of conditions here where in this span here, I'd get something that would be a positive curvature, but then out on the cantilever part, I'd get a negative curvature. And so there's going to be some point of inflection of curvature that's going to take place where I go from a positive to a negative curvature. So that's positive, that's negative. So kind of seeing that shape, then I'd expect that this portion of the beam is going to have a positive moment and this portion would have a negative moment. So we were in a hurry. We might be able to start eliminating a 50-50 here. Um, this end has got the beam as a positive and we know that's not right on that end. All right. Um, that might be, at least we're following in the right uh, direction of the components. Uh, that one's negative, negative, uh, this one's positive out here on this on this end. That doesn't make sense either. All right, and so now we've kind of got it down to th these two are the only diagrams that are consistent with having positive areas where we expect there to be positive areas and negative areas where we expect there to be negative. Okay, because these these are working out a little different. These are negative. These are reversal what we would expect. Um, in looking at the shear diagrams, and there may be some help with some of this too, um, think about where the reactions would be for something like this. I would have a, I'd expect an upwards reaction here, and then I'd have another upwards reaction here to hold that up. I'd expect this one to be bigger because it's got to carry the cantilever and some portion of the backspan, all right? You get this cantilever enough, then this reaction over here on the left would actually have to hold it down versus being upwards. Um, and looking at the shape, maybe we can deduce some of those and let's come back and look at this cantilever again. And so what we were just looking at a few moments ago, if I isolate out this cantilever portion, here now I've got a uniform load being applied to this piece. I've got the cut that I'm gonna make. I'm gonna show the positive shear and positive moment and the um, orientation upwards and clockwise because I've got the beam to the right of the cut that I have here. This is a magnitude W and there's my X. So now we can just write equations, sum the forces in the Y. So then I'll sum moments at the cut as well. So now I'm gonna have minus moment. The shear doesn't contribute in the moment equation because it has a zero perpendicular distance. And the uniform load times X, that ends up being the force that takes place. W times X, that's the force resultant. And that resultant on this rectangular load is gonna take place at X divided by two away. 
that two is gonna be in the clockwise direction, so that's gonna be negative. That's gonna to equal to zero. There, there's no load out here on the end. I don't have a support because I've just got a free cantilever. So my moment equation here is minus, I'm sorry y'all, I shouldn't have put the square there. It's just W times X times the distance of X divided by two. So this ends up being a magnitude of W X squared divided by two. All right, so that's the moment at the cut. So if, if this cut is right up against the end of this cantilever, my moment would be zero. And as I make my way towards the support, this magnitude is gonna get more and more negative as a quadratic relationship. Now that, that alone may be enough for us to decipher what the solution is gonna be. And you can begin to see here that because, because the load was uniform, then our moment diagram is quadratic. All right, and so we already excluded these two. By this one calculation I've made on the simple end, I know that my moment won't be linear. It's gonna be quadratic and it's gonna start at zero and it's gonna become increasingly more negative due to this squared term. And that is consistent with this diagram right here. And then this one also is consistent in that I jump up and at some point I become positive and where this moment diagram goes through zero, that is this inflection point where my curvature changes from positive to negative. So from the moment diagram, we know we're C. If we look at the shear diagram, let's see if we can solve something here on this. The shear here is gonna be positive shear minus W times X equals zero. So my shear is equal to W times X. So my shear is gonna be changing linearly. It's gonna be a value of zero on this free end. Well, that one, that one checks, that's zero at the free end, that's zero at the free end. This one's not zero at the free end, can't be that one could be that one. As I move away from the free end, my magnitude of shear increases, but it becomes more positive. So this one is, as I move away from the free end, it becomes more negative. Can't be that one. All right. So now I'm down to these two. Okay. I'm down to those two. And here's a little subtlety that they're, um, so what, what's being indicated here, I'll zoom in here real close. This reaction is this vertical change in the shear diagram. I then have a slope because I have a uniform load and that slope begins to drop me down. I experience this vertical change in the shear diagram because I have a concentrated load. So this magnitude of vertical change is equal to P. I continue now with my uniform load and the magnitude of that uniform load is the same. So therefore the slope of the shear diagram stays the same. All right, that checks, that checks. That slope stays the same. Now, this vertical change is gonna be the magnitude of this reaction. And so the part that tells you between these two shear diagrams is realize that the magnitude of the uniform load here is constant, which means that the slope of the shear diagram is gonna be constant. So this is the only, shear diagram that you have that the slope of each one of these segments is the same, which is consistent with a uniform load of a constant magnitude across the entire span. 
This one has a much steeper slope and that steeper slope would be as though you have more load, like a step in the, in the load diagram on the cantilever portion, which we don't have. So that's why that's not a solution. So now the shear diagram for this case is A and the moment diagram is C. So my suggestion y'all, look at the way you expect something to bend, okay, before you even get into the diagram. That'll be an immediate clue as to the sign of the moment diagrams. And instead of starting on the, on the end that you don't know anything about, start on something that is straightforward and that is a cantilever. And so using the cantilever and a simple equation relationship, now maybe you're able to further eliminate potential uh, answers. And so with the curvature, we got rid of two of them. Um, understanding that the shear at the free end is gonna be zero, that helps get rid of some. And then just seeing whether the shear is positive or negative, got rid of a few others. This one, you're down to a 50-50 in seeing that the uniform load maintains a uniform slope. So uniform load gives you a linear relationship in your shear diagram. You integrate that again, and now I have a quadratic relationship for my moment diagram. So you're, you're integrating through here 